All right, Giants fans, you loved this show last season, so I asked Gabe if he would come back for another nightcap for spring training. It's okay. a great time to catch up with the manager and get a preview of the season and drink. Have a have a scotch. Cheers, Cheers to I mean, 2023. Yeah, it's going to be a good year. It feels good. I, feel I like good the vibe. It. Yeah. Probably the question I received the most about you because we talked about it last year was were you able in the off season to go get lost somewhere? Yeah, no, I had some time to myself. Um, I had two trips. One was in Western Canada. And for that trip, I had a van with a bed. So um, that meant I get to sleep wherever I want to sleep. And um, I got to see my son. So my son was playing football at the University of British Columbia. That was the main reason I was up there. Sure. But then if I'm going to be up there anyway, I may as well uh, take some drives and camp and fish and kind of walk and uh, I got lost a little bit, as you mentioned. So it was really nice. Then once we were kind of through that baseball stuff and we got to the holidays, I decided to do the Cabo thing and then drove back up. And once I cut through the middle of Baja, I was up the, the um, Pacific Ocean side of Baja and got to camp in places like, well, right outside of Ensenada um, and then up through Big Sur and back to San Francisco. It was, yeah, it was actually one of the better, the better vacations that I've taken. So I came back feeling really refreshed and in spring training, I feel like I got my fill of getting away from baseball and now I feel fully back and in, invested and um, yeah. 100% here. Yeah, I thought of you yesterday. I was walking around Scottsdale and I've been here a lot too, but I don't get a lot of time to go do much usually. And so I just kind of took off and I had my little map, you know, on my ways or whatever. And then I said, Got you lost know, in Scottsdale, Amy. Gabe, Gabe, <laughs> this is big for me. In, in this Old is big Town for Scottsdale. Me. Like, we, we have a new so hotel. So adventurous of you. I, but let me, I thought you'd <laughs> Sorry, be so proud of me. Go ahead. And I was like, I'm not really sure where I'm going. I'm going to put my map away. I'm not really sure where I'm going because Gabe would say, you know what? I like to get lost. So I did. I got a little lost. I had a sense of direction, but I, I was like, I took your mantra. All right, so you are active on social media, mm -hmm. and it's been fun to watch you cook. Yeah. And I was just wondering you know, what your thought process was on why you wanted to start that and what, you, what you're what you sharing with that. The cooking that. or the social media? I'm going to get to the social media, okay. just the cooking. <laughs> um, great. I'm, no, I'm glad I'm, we're going to have a chance to talk about the social media, the philosophy behind that. But um, cooking is one of my favorite things to do. And it's very experimental for me. It's very meditative for me. Um, also, I feel like I can connect with people over food. And both Absolutely. the cooking part of food, the restaurant part of food. Um, I can't tell you how many guys, when I'm at the ballpark, we're, we're finding ourselves in conversations about restaurants or steaks or grilling or smoking meats or mm -hmm. like side dishes or whatever. We just, we just talk a lot about food. So um, I think it gives a, me something to connect with our players and our staff on. A lot of people in your position yeah. and of your notoriety would not do it right. because they're putting themselves out there. Yeah. And we both know when you're on social media, you yeah. can be a target. Yeah. Uh, how do you handle that? No, I mean, that's, that's very well said. Um, I, I'm very comfortable expressing myself, very comfortable with criticism. Um, whether or not you're on social media in the positions that managers are in, you're going to be the target of criticism. So you can be out there and participating or you can be or you can be like hiding. Yeah. Um, but either way, it, it's going to happen. The way I see um, social media is very much it's it's an art like you're sharing with somebody. So I'm not saying that I'm some artist. great artist. <laughs> but what I'm saying is it's it's a way to kind of like create. Right. That's it what, is. That's content creation, whether that's around music, it's around cooking, um, it's around travel, whatever it is. It's like, this is just another part of me. All right, so I want to talk to you about the season. And okay. one of the biggest conversations has been the rule changes. Yeah. Had a great conversation with your new GM, mm -hmm. Pete Patella. Great guy. He's awesome, isn't he? He's awesome. Yeah, he's smart, too and got his take and I think fans want to hear from you too and the, like the three biggest like the the clock let's start with the the pitch clock what, yeah. what are your thoughts on it um I think it's great uh, uh the pace of the game you have more time in your life yeah, yeah. <laughs> um so I don't think it's any secret that spring training can be kind of boring you know like you get into there's a lot to to see but yes. you get into the second half of some of these games and it's like 
it's just like you, you kind of yeah it's 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 a long game so the the pace has really improved and i think as i mentioned i've this is i've been in a lot of spring trainings and i've um luckily i've seen a lot of baseball i played for a really long time i think this is the one change that i'm most excited about for the fans because it does make things does. feel a little bit faster and um I, I, I don't mind a slow game. I don't sure. mind when it's moving slow, but I really like the crisp pace of a pitcher getting on the mound and delivering the baseball. How do you think you would have reacted as a player with the eight second to get back in the box yeah. situation as a, as a hitter? Uh, I think it would have helped me because I would have thought less. And I think athletes are at their best when they've done all the work in the cage. They get in the batter's box between the lines they shut off the thought process mm -hmm. and just allow the natural ability to take over. So I actually think it would have helped me because I, I was pretty cerebral as a player and like trying to predict what the pitcher might do. Hard to believe. Yeah, shocker. <laughs> um, but like that, yeah, that, that little cat sense. and mouse game. You gotta get like, in there and go. Uh, the base sizes. Yeah. What do you got on that? This is an initiative that it's not coming from players and staff, it's coming from Major League Baseball. We want to mm -hmm. see, fans want to see more action. They want to see more stolen bases. They want to see more first to thirds and first to home. I'm good with that. Last one is the shift yeah. restrictions. When you have the ability to position defenders anywhere on the baseball field, that adds more coaching influence. It has it adds more managerial influence and it adds more game strategy influence. What we have, the way it's set up now, you have to have two de uh, defenders on the right side and the left side of the infield. You can't have a shortstop or a second baseman with their heels on the grass. Right. And what that values is athleticism from the players. So a little less coach and strategy influence, a little bit more just player athletic, physical ability, yeah, physical ability influence. Amy, I'm, I'm fine either way. All right, so defense, you've already talked about this, but last year it was an issue for you guys. How do you feel you guys have addressed it going into 2023? Uh, first, we brought in two all-star caliber outfielders in Michael Conforto and Mitch Haniger. Um, so what we suspect will happen is we're going to have outfielders playing the outfield. That, I think, solves the people playing out of position. Yeah, just think we've shorted it all up a little bit. And haven't, we didn't do anything wild, right? Like, obviously, the Carlos Correa pursuit was a thing. It didn't work out. Mm -hmm. That was, you know, one place that might have improved our defense as well. But I kind of liked the way we did it. So I want to talk about your rotation. Sure. So on paper, for whatever's worth to me, you, you got some depth there. Possibly seven, possibly seven starters. Right. So, you know, what are the strengths that you're seeing, and and how do you deal with the flexibility that you may have going? with that many potential starters. That, is that a good situation for you? I mean, it's the oldest joke in baseball is like you think you have starting pitching depth and then it's gone like that. So it's <laughs> I just, hope I didn't jinx no, you. No, <laughs> at first I don't believe in jinxes, but second. I'm glad. Yeah, no worries. I feel good about the depth of our starting rotation. Carlos Rodon is um, an explosive number one starter, yes. like very tough to replace. So you don't really replace him in a one for one kind of way, you replace him in, in a depth way. You add Sean Manaya, you add Ross Stripling, um, he pushes Jacob Junis to the bullpen. You got a healthy Tony Descalfani back and mm -hmm. you're certainly seven starters deep. Last year, we you know, clearly we started a lot of bullpen games. That takes its toll. We did a nice job in those bullpen games. We won, we've won a lot of bullpen games over the last couple of years. Uh, but I think what's interesting about this is we're gonna have guys who can take down a few more innings yes. and we can still open Save games on the back end. yeah so open games with relievers and right. be strategic around it but less out of necessity yeah. and more out of strategy strategy yeah, yeah there will be a little more rested for sure you know what i thought was really cool to hear because i've talked to a couple of the prospects i interviewed kyle harrison the other day how they feel about logan yeah and the role logan is taking with a younger player and being a mentor and I, I think that's so important. I think, you know, you, you lead by a lot of different ways, but how you treat someone coming up behind you yeah. says a lot. So I remember coming up with some veterans that were relentless and ruthless. And I, I'll never forget that. And then I had a couple of veterans that were 
you know, very, wanted me to feel comfortable and, and be myself. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget those either. I mean, guys like Tony Clark and, and Damian Easley in Detroit, these were guys that treated me with a, a ton of respect and let me be myself. And uh, there's no doubt that Logan remembers the ones who let him be him mm -hmm. and encouraged him and, and tried to make him better. And he probably remembers the ones who, Didn't. yeah, kind of, Push, we all, we learned something hard, from yeah. all those situations. No doubt. Okay, so you know I have to, I can't leave without playing some type of game. Let's go. I love games. <laughs> so, I just, this one's simple. It's straight up word association. So I'm hoping you can come up with one word. I'm going to tell you the player and one word to describe that player. Okay, cool. Okay. Taylor Rogers. Playful. Side note. Can you, can you tell Taylor and Tyler apart? Are you having trouble or is, you got uh, it? It depends. If I get like close ups and I'm with them, it's pretty easy for me to tell them apart. One will walk through the weight room. Yeah, quickly. walk through the, the weight room and I'm walking through the weight room like, wait, <laughs> I'm one? not sure. Which one? But you know, Raj always works. So if I'm, what's up Raj? Raj. <laughs> I love that. that. Yeah. That's a great strategy. Yeah. Comforto. Um, focused. I have some other ones too, but I think, yeah, focus is a good one for Michael. Hanniger. Great smile. Yeah, lights up a room. Yeah. Manaya. Um, fascinating. I, I just. We're, we're playing one word, right? You're not asking me f to expand on my word. No, one word. Okay. But great smile was two words. I'm just yeah. making sure you know that. Smiley is the word. <laughs> happy. Happy. Okay, okay. Um, and finally, Ross Stripling. Um, professional. Ooh, that's good. Last question. What excites you most about this group? I like coming to work with them. That's yeah, a I, nice feeling. Yeah. I like coming to work with this group, our coaching staff. I really enjoy being around. Um, our players are just real people. You know, it's just a good group. I, the more I am around baseball, the more I just want to come, come to, the, to the field with good people and compete. So that, that excites me. Yeah, I agree. Cheers. Cheers. To a great 2023.